A Ukrainian official has said that the Ukrainian army's recent incursion into Russia's Kursk region is first of several stages in taking the fight to the capital, Moscow. We see only part of this operation. In the future, we will see several stages. Head of the military administration in the Ukrainian city of Sumy, Oleksiy Drozdenko, told The Guardian, adding that the Kursk operation was not like previous raids. Drozdenko said he had been closely involved in the Kursk operation's planning, but said he could not say too much about it because there was more to come. The official did not provide any further details about Ukraine's military plans. Furthermore, he noted that hundreds of Russian soldiers have been captured since the incursion into Kursk on Tuesday the 6th of August, while the Ukrainian army has suffered minimal losses. Sometimes there are more than 100 or 150 prisoners of war a day. Drozdenko said while speaking about the offensive in Kursk, which became the largest scale attack on Russian territory since the start of the war in February 2022. He added that Russian troops do not want to fight Ukrainians. The cross-border attack on Kursk was a complete surprise to the Kremlin, which believed Ukraine would fight to defend its own territory, Drozdenko stressed. The military official praised the Ukrainian army's success in Kursk so far, stressing that hospitals in northeastern Ukrainian city of Sumy reported low numbers of casualties and injuries during the operation. On the first day of the operation, there were only 15 casualties, he claimed. 60, 70% of them were very light, caused by bomb damage, shrapnel. Sumy is the Ukrainian city closest to the incursion and had been closely involved in the operation's planning. With the population of 250,000, Sumy city had not been involved in the hostilities since the early days of the war. However, the incursion into Kursk has brought the war back to Sumy and the border areas to the north with renewed air, missile and artillery strikes. When we speak about seven months of 2024, January to July, there were approximately 400 strikes to border areas. But last week we had 200 strikes in only one week, Drozdenko said. Two people were injured after a ballistic missile landed in a street on Saturday. Sumi has been protected by air defense with interceptions and launches heard and seen from the city center over the last week. The Ukrainian armed forces operation on Russian territory could potentially extend into the Russian Belgorod region given that it is a matter of security for residents in the border area with Ukraine. However, this will depend on the strategic plans of the Ukrainian military leadership. In a comment to RBC Ukraine, Ukrainian military expert Vladislav Seleznov explains whether the Ukrainian offensive in the Belgorod region is possible and how many Russian troops are stationed there. The interlocutor reminded that in the past, there have been multiple raids in the Belgorod region conducted by groups like the Russian Volunteer Corps, the Freedom of Russia Legion and other battalions. According to him, what happened once could very well happen again. I don't know General Sirsky's plans, but I'm confident that what we saw in the Kursk region is just one stage in the effort to create a security zone. The same sanitary zone that Putin once dreamed of is now being established by the Ukrainian Defense Forces, said Zeleznov. In his opinion, it is already evident that a certain security space is forming in the border area of Sumy. Although artillery shells and rockets continue to arrive in large numbers, the amount of artillery shells and mortar rounds has decreased. The expert noted that the larger the area of control by the Ukrainian army in the Kursk region, the safer the conditions for residents of Sumy will be. Could such a scenario occur in the Belgorod region? Quite possibly, it should not be ruled out for obvious reasons. Creating a security space is not just General Sirsky's desire to demonstrate his effectiveness. It is a matter of security for the residents of our border area, says Zeleznov. The expert also does not rule out a similar scenario for the Bryansk region in Russia. This is really important. If it is impossible to negotiate with the enemy, if the enemy continues to kill the civilian population of our country, then we must find ways to neutralize the enemy and create a security perimeter for our citizens in the border areas, says Zeleznov. The interlocutor suggests that the Russian military grouping in the Bryansk region may amount to up to 20,000, probably even less. He notes that the enemy has quite seriously prepared engineering fortifications there as the Russian forces began constructing them in the region after the first raid by the Russian Volunteer Corps and the Freedom of Russia Legion. The residents of our Chernihiv region constantly suffer from enemy actions by sabotage and reconnaissance groups and shelling. 
This problem needs to be addressed somehow. Will it be resolved by crossing the border and attacking directly from Ukrainian territory into the Bryansk region? Of course, I don't know, said Zeleznov. He believes it would be advisable to create the necessary capabilities for Ukrainian forces in this manner. However, it must be understood that creating a sanitary zone in the Kursk region could likely expand to the Bryansk and Belgorod regions the interlocutor emphasizes. The expert explains that much depends on how quickly the enemy can move enough resources to block the Ukrainian foothold in the Kursk region. In this context, the expert reminded that the enemy is currently using supplementary resources. The only thing is that the Russian army is pulling forces into the Kursk region from Kherson, Zaporizhia and the north of Kharkiv. However, they have not withdrawn their resources from eastern Ukraine and continue to primarily attack in the Pokrovsk direction.